What's going on, folks? It's your main man, Mr. Council, back with another one. Saturday Motivation, you know how we do. So Saturday, because Saturday is the day that you nuclear your own. Most people work nine to five, so by the time they get to Saturday, they feel it's necessary to take their foot off the gas. For most artists, creators, and business minds, on the Saturday's day, they put your foot on the gas and handle your business. What's good, folks? It's bright, sunshiny, the clouds are out. Um, it's a beautiful day. The smoke has cleared. And we are back with another opportunity to be great. Um, before I get started today, I just want to mention, um, I've been hyping up a lot on social media about the new project that I have coming out this summer, um, Better Man Chronicles Volume 2. I'm so excited about this project. Um, I've put a lot of work into it. It's not going to be as many tracks as the, um, the first one. But the music is taken... An incredible leap. Um, and I want to start um, rolling out songs this summer. I want to try to drop a track every week. And then I'm going to drop the full album at the end of the summer. Um, but I want to just see, you know, you guys' opinions. I want to really start actually playing some of the music now. But because of copyright reasons, I'm not sure if I'll get flagged or my videos will get taken down. So I'm going to start experimenting with that over the next week or two on my social media. Um, hit me up on Facebook, Charles Council, um, Instagram, Mr. Council Music, TikTok, Mr. Council Music. Make sure you spell out Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R. It's very important when you go try to look at my content. I used to do MR period, um, but I made an entire change a few years ago. Once I dropped this last album, I shifted everything from MR period to M-I-S-T-E-R. So make sure when you're searching out my content, um, just make sure you spell out Mr. and my STR. It's very important. Today I want to talk about growth. I want to talk about growth because I feel like it's probably the most difficult thing to, to understand and connect with along your journey to greatness um, because it takes the most time. And that's my point for today. Growth takes time. Um, I think a lot of people want things in their life to happen overnight. And what we have to understand or what you discover along your journey is that true growth takes time. Um, the reason being is because growth isn't just physical, but it's also mental and it's also emotional and it's also spiritual. And just because you're physically at a place where you need to be doesn't mean that you're there mentally or emotionally. And you have to be connected with all four, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. You have to be connected with all four before you're really launched out there. Because you have no idea how one of those different aspects could destroy everything that you've spent years building. See, when you're on a mission and you're led by God, God is not going to thrust you out there ill-prepared. He's going to wait for the moment that he knows that you're ready and everything is lined up. Now, throughout that process, if you're seriously working on yourself, you have a realization that you're getting good. You're becoming great. And you preemptively want to be thrust out there before your time. And oftentimes when you rush that, that's when your time in the sun is short-lived. And when I say time in the sun, I mean just your moment to shine as far as your greatness shining. Because I don't want to get to a point where I focus on me shining and me being famous. I want my greatness. I want my gift to be on display more than myself. I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be admired and adored in that way. Because to me, that's just the epitome of arrogance. Somebody that's searching for fame searching for attention you know they just ha they don't have enough love and confidence for themselves on the inside i have plenty of that so i don't need anybody's validation in that regard i just know that what i'm doing is important it's impactful to this world and i'm excited to see what god can do through me so i'm not really focused on being a star you know i'm focused on my gift shining 
But what you have to understand is in order for your gift to shine, you have to be a reflection of true greatness on the inside. And God is working on all of us. You know, some of us have issues that we're dealing with. Some of us have vices that we're stuck to, you know, some of us have people that we're dragging along that we need to let go of. Some of us um, have emotional issues and traumas that we haven't dealt with that could come out as a reflection of what we deal with once our gift is on display. And if you're not in a mental state to be able to handle all of those things, then all the work that you've put in, all the work that God has done through you could be destroyed in a matter of moments. And you see it happen to people all the time. They get to a particular place in life and someone or something comes out of nowhere and tears it all down. But see, if you have true growth, faith and patience that God is trying to give you, there is not a man or woman on this earth that can tear down what you are trying to do because what you're trying to do is trying to display a God-given gift. And God isn't going to allow any man to destroy something that he has created, especially if you're in the right mindset. See, most people are so focused on becoming famous because of their gift and not allowing their gift to shine. They're so focused on being the man or the woman and being the centerpiece of everything, then they, they can't see the forest for the trees. They can't understand that their gift is not about them. It's about the people that they are serving. And I use that word purposely. People that we serve because we serve each other. We pour greatness into each other. We love, we should be loving and protecting and allowing each other to shine or our greatness to shine. And so it's so many people that are just so um, excited to get out there that they jump out there before their time. And I don't wanna do that anymore. I used to do that. I used to be on a rush time schedule. Like I wanna be able, cause I wanted to be rich for a long time. And I think that was my problem because I was thinking about all of this. I was judging all of my success through monetary value. Instead of the, the small growth that I was um, witnessing within myself the leaps and bounds that my um, creativity was taking. Well, because my bank account wasn't increasing, that was my sole judgment of my success. And I was totally wrong for doing that. But what I had to take time to see what was God was working on me. See, God has plans for you that you may not have for yourself. And that's why you have to let go and let him do his thing. Because if you try to be in charge of everything, then you're in actuality trying to play God. You have no idea who God is planning to bless through your gifts and talents. You have no idea how he plans to change the world through your gifts and talents. But if you focus solely on it being about you, then you don't even deserve the gifts and talents that he gave you. And that's why often he either takes them or doesn't allow them to shine on the level that one would think because then it's going to become all about you and your arrogance is going to take over and your talent, your gift is going to fade into the background. Don't you notice now people are famous just for being famous? It's more people that are famous for nothing in this era that I've ever known my entire life. It's almost like fame is a drug to people. People get addicted to being loved and adored. And most people aren't even loved and adored. People are so phony to your face. That's why I don't even judge people by almost their actions in front of me because it's really about what they say when you're not there. People can say anything to you, to your face, convince you of anything. But at the end of the day, it's what happens when you're not there is what's true. And I'm never going to know that, so I'm not even going to focus on that. I just focus on where God has me and where he's trying to take me.
physical growth, mental growth, spiritual growth, emotional growth. And I'm growing in all of those areas of my life. And once you have a balance of all four, then God knows that you're ready and prepared for his mission. Well, those people who are chemically imbalanced in one of those ways are going to allow one of them to destroy everything they've worked so hard for. So stop being so caught up and being out there and enjoy the journey. Enjoy what God is doing in your life in the present moment. Because we're so focused on, if you just think about it, when you were a kid, all you wanted to do was be grown. And now that you're grown, all you want to do is get younger. It's because you're impatient. You didn't understand the joys of being in, in, in grade school. The gift of being in a, in, in a good environment in high school, college. Or whatever journey your life took you, you didn't enjoy it. You're so focused on what was supposed to come later. Once you got it, you didn't even really appreciate it because that was the end goal. And in reality, it should only be the starting point. Getting rich should not be the end goal. It's what you do once you get rich is what you, what you should be focused on. Because if all you're focused on is buying things once you get rich, then you shouldn't even be the one to get all that money. You should be trying to get rich so you can pour into your community, uplift people. But no, most people want to get rich so they could just brag to other people about what they have. And if that's your mindset, you may get exactly what you want. And once you have it, you'll be all by yourself with it. And that's why most people spend so much time bragging, especially when they have, because they're not truly happy on the inside with what they have. I heard Mike Tyson say, um, God will punish you by giving you everything you want to see if you can handle it. Man, he said that the two or three years that he spent in jail, he had more peace than the entire time he was a boxer. And this man was making $30, $40 million a fight in the 80s. Guys ain't even making that kind of money now. To imagine the kind of money and access, what, what he had access to then. And to still not be happy because he was disconnected from one of those four ways. He became a champion at what, 19? Youngest heavyweight champion in the history of boxing. Loved and adored by millions. But miserable on the inside. That's not how it's supposed to be. At your greatest moments like that, you're supposed to have joy and peace on the inside because of what you've gone through to get there. But once most people get there, it's nothing but stress, strife, headache, and heartache. So people are rushing so much to get to this so-called money and one, don't know how to handle it. And two, don't know how to handle the people around them once they get it. Come on. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. True growth takes time. And you need to be in the right physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional headspace to, to go through everything you're going to go through once God puts your gift on display. Because once he puts you out there, that's when it gets hard, not now. 
not when you're fine tuning yourself. Those are the moments you should be enjoying because it's gonna get that much harder once you're out there and most people don't even realize that. Because most people are so focused on having money being the end goal. They don't even think about what they would do with it. How it could change people's lives. What it could do for the people in their lives. And then even oftentimes once they get it, they do nothing but spend it on the people around them under the guise of taking care of people when all you're doing then is enabling people to continue to be lazy. I heard Steve Harvey say that the people around him would crumble if something happened to him. To me, that's telling me that you're not teaching people how to fish. You're fishing. I don't want you to just fish for people. That's other people's jobs. You're supposed to fish for yourself. If you don't know how to fish, then you have to go to somebody to learn or learn yourself. And so once you've gotten there, it's not your job to just give and give and give to people. It's your job to then teach people how to do what you did. And that's what people don't understand about parenting. All they want to do is give and give and give to their kids and not allow their kids to go through what they went through because they felt like what they went through was so difficult that they don't want nobody else to go through it. No, man. If I ever was blessed with having a child, I would want him to go through some of the same things, if not more than what I've gone through because I know what it made me, what it turned me into. And did that without the guidance of a father. So if you have the guidance of a father with you, imagine what your child could do. The guidance of a father and a mother because our society has definitely diminished the value of the power of a father. I know I'm running along here, but I'm on one. So if you with me, you with me. If you're not, just go on someplace else about your business. But just understand, if I can motivate you today, true growth takes time. Because if you are not right in the mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental places, one of those areas is going to cause the demise of everything that you tried to build. So enjoy the journey. Enjoy what God is taking you through because once you do that, Everything that comes to you, you'll understand exactly why, how, and when it's supposed to. Because you'll be totally connected to everything going on around you. The end goal isn't money, people. The end goal is to be able to look back and see how far you've come. And how much he's changed you for the better, if that's what's occurred. And if that is truly what's occurred, the blessings will continue to flow. And those blessings do not always come in the form of money. That blessing could be the right woman in your life or the right man. That blessing could be a child at the right time when you need it. That blessing could be a change in a job that may not take you to a better financial space, but takes you to a healthier mental state. Come on. People don't understand the value of the little things because they're so focused on having things. And that's not what's important. So take a deep look at what you're doing with your life. The goal you're on, is it serving you? Is it serving the people around you? Is it making you better? Because if it's not, I can tell you right now, you're on the wrong path. That's my time. Peace to all my people in the struggle. Bye.
Let it go. I don't want your love around me anymore. So let it go. Save your sorry and back off me and let me go. Here we go. Please don't talk me and back off me and let me go. Let it go. I don't want your love around me anymore. So let me go. Thursday marks the day we made it years ago. On that day I felt I met incredible. Can't tell me she wasn't just for me for sure. She made me feel like I was invincible. Told me I was all she needed. I suppose. Guess all that she needed was my bank account. Found out she's entangled with some other guy. Now I know for ages that she's proven. I don't want your love around me anymore. So let it go. 